Example 3 of the washer method. In this example we're given the line y equals x, the curve y equals x squared, but they want me to go about the y-axis. So I want to first draw what I'm looking at, what I'm working with. Here's the xy plane, the line y equals x, and y equals x squared. y equals x squared would look something like this. But this time, I want to go about the y-axis. If you're going to go about the y-axis, everything has to be sliced against that y-axis, which means that I have to have dy's, not dx's. And if I'm working with dy's, these are going to have to be solved for x. For the linear function, not really a big deal. I know I have x equal y. For the parabola, which technically comes over here as well, I would have to solve this as the square root y equals x. But when I do square root y, because all I did was introduce a radical to both sides, remember that this would be plus or minus. Because I'm on the right side of my parabola, it would be the positive piece, so it's going to be square root y. Now as I set up my formula, the formula never changes. It says volume will equal pi, the integral from y equal to y equal, big R squared minus little r squared, in this case dy. Yes, I left the pi out on this one. I'll pull it back in in a moment. Now, as I look at this, the furthest distance that I'm traveling out here is going to be that rad y. And so this would be volume equals the integral rad y squared minus the closest distance is the linear function. And so that would just be a y that gets squared. And notice I'm leaving that pi out there and I didn't do these values for the y yet. I have to consider where this is as a y value and this is as a y value. It too will be from zero. Now think about this. I'm looking at these two functions right here. This one and this one. When would those x's be the same? When is square root y equal to y? Those would be equal at one. This point here ha happens to be 1, 1, and this point here happens to be 0, 0. But I'm looking at the y values when I set up my boundaries. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1. And then we've got our big old dy there. Now, I'll pull my pi in as I do this. If I square this, square root of rad y is just y. It would be the integral from 0 to 1 of pi y minus... Squaring y is y squared, so it'd be minus pi y squared dy. I can put that in the old calculator. And as I go to my calculator, again, I'm going to type these in as x's. So I'll do pi times x minus pi x squared. Option 7. And I will go from 0 to 1. So I start at 0 and I run to 1. And I get 0.524 rounded appropriately, three decimal places. The volume we equal 0.524 units cubed. 0.524 units cubed. That's an example of the washer method where we went about the y-axis. Now, I'm not quite done. I think I'm going to do an example 3.1 because I think we're ready to go to the next level. 
So far we've been very nice to you about our axes of revolution. We're going to call this example 3.5. Same functions. I'm going to start with that y equal x. I'm just going to redraw this here. I've got actually we called that x equals y x equals y and we have x equal positive red y. What's going to be different? I want to revolve this about let's go x equal negative 2 so I have an axis of revolution that's not the y-axis. It's actually over here at x equal negative 2. There's not a whole lot that changes other than that you have to represent your distance for these radii. And so when I set this up, I'm going to say that my volume is going to equal, it's still going to be from this starting y value to the ending y value, so I know that I have the integral from 0 to 1, and these are y equals, y equals 0 to y equal 1, pi, what's going to be a little bit different though is, if you're talking about your distance, I need to know the furthest distance from my axis of revolution, so that's going to be all the way out to there, that distance would be my curve, in this case, minus my axis of revolution. It would be radical y minus negative 2. That would create that distance. Radical y minus negative 2, which would be radical y plus 2. That gets squared. That's your big radius. That's going to be the complete distance, radical y, minus negative 2. That's your big radius that gets squared, minus pi. Now I have to do the nearest distance, the closest distance, which would be this one right here. That's the smaller radii. And that radii would be the x minus negative 2. And x minus negative 2 would actually be did I say x? y? y? would be y plus 2 that gets squared. Okay, I'm talking about this y equals x, but it's x equal y. This distance is y right here, and then I gotta add this other two units to be a total distance of y plus 2, and then I'll simply do my dy on there. Now, as these become a little bit more challenging, I'll put them in the calculator. I'll let the calculator do most of the work. So when I set this one up, I'll do my pi, parenthesis, radical x. Remember, when you go into calculator, everything's got to be x. Plus 2, close parenthesis, square it, minus pi, parenthesis, x plus 2, close parenthesis, square it, and then I'm going to tell it to do option 7. So it graphs this, and I want to go from 0 to 1. And you notice that we get quite a larger volume, which would make sense, because if you're just revolving if you're just revolving this about the y-axis, that's just a little piece, a little bowl shape, I guess. If I go all the way out to y equal, x equal negative 2, this is actually going to come all the way out here. This would be a much greater band, so I expect that volume to be much larger. And so, on this one, it told me that my volume, compared to the previous answer of 0.524, is 2. 618, 2.618 units cubed, because that's going to be a volume. 
So that gives you a little more advanced example of that washer method, the washer method, where we're using a different axis of revolution. It's just parallel to the y-axis, not crazy difficult, but you're going to start to see that where they are asking you to come up with the total distance for your radii. And so there's our example 3 and 3.5 for the washer method.